Arya is far from fight ready. I don't know if Arya is taking this as serious as he should right now. There's just something that's just not clicking. I don't really know what it is. If someone's wrapping around your head and neck, or a proper guillotine, right? We're gonna go two on one, so both your hands are gonna trap the choking arm and pull it away from the neck. If you come up, and you can start pulling, I'm gonna look up like this. You don't have no power here. So look up. Good, get your hips towards me. Yeah, see now I don't have power here. Now you can spin. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Aria, and I have started training once again in mixed martial arts with the hopes, the plan to step back into the cage for a second amateur fight. Over two years ago, I stepped into the cage after just four months of training to fight my first amateur bout. I lost the fight in just under a minute after I refused to tap out to a guillotine choke and was rendered unconscious. But for me, it was always more than just a win or a loss. Yes, a win would have been amazing, but for me, the victory was stepping into that cage. It was an incredible personal journey, and I released a video about it on BuzzFeed, and so many of you were so incredibly supportive. I still, to this day, receive messages about that video and questions about whether or not I would fight again, because I did, at the end of the last video, say that I would fight again. That was over two years ago. So much has changed. I mean, let's not even start with the, the state of the world. Even with myself though, so much has changed in my personal life, my professional life. I have a mustache now. I wanted to live up to the promise I made at the end of the last video. And so I've begun training again with the hope of fighting another amateur bout. I've brought back the exact same team I trained with last time. I have as my head coach, Chris Riley, a legendary MMA coach and Muay Thai champion. I'm also once again working with Daniel Gutierrez, who runs Defiant Gym in Burbank, California. But this time around to make sure I don't get caught in another fluke choke that I somehow can't get out of, I've added a dedicated jujitsu coach in the shape of Scott Epstein, a third degree black belt under the legendary Eddie Bravo at 10th Planet. I don't know if it was a fluke position. I mean, it could be. It's a guillotine. He went for it. It's just not the best setup of a guillotine. It's kind of a weird, shitty one. But because you had no knowledge of, oh, I'm in trouble now, you had no urgency to get the fuck out, right? Jiu-jitsu, for the layman, it's kind of like wrestling, but instead of trying to pin the other person, you're trying to make them say uncle, tap out, give up. And there's a lot of joints that could be manipulated into a position where it's gonna hurt really bad, potentially break a bone or hyperextend the joint. So the opponent would have to give up set. And then there are chokes. And the chokes, if you don't let go, they go to sleep. And if you don't let go after they sleep, they go into a coma. And if you don't go let go after that, they die. Ario would not have gotten choked out in that first fight if he had been training jiu-jitsu. He would have smelled that out a million miles away. It wouldn't have gone that far. I don't know the outcome would have been, but it definitely would have been choked out to that. No shot. Now, there's a sense of urgency, like, wait, you ain't getting my neck, homeboy. Get the fuck out of here. You know? If, if now it's going to be, I'm getting your neck, bitch. Right? I'm going to drop some illegal elbows on you. <laughs> you want me to get DQ? You want me to get no, DQ? No, <laughs> no, no. It's not, no. Like, you missed the hook and the elbow accidentally hit. <laughs> That's allowed. Yeah. Accidentally. Yeah. 30 seconds. One, two, three, two. Again. Hands up. Proper punches with your body. Chin down. Come on, chin. That chin has to be corrected immediately. Good. 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 Come on, hands. Good. Good. Come on, bring those hands back up. Raise the bell. Training has been, uh, it's been something. So I've been training now for a little bit uh, and it's it's been tough, you know, getting back into the swing of things after two years off. I certainly haven't been training consistently uh, since the last fight, especially, you know, when COVID hit, you know, like rolling around with other people in a gym was probably the least uh, sanitary thing you could do in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, I wasn't going to the gym. Uh, for a, a long stretch of time. So we just basically went through some very basic training and only a couple rounds, just simple faint 
jab, cross hook, I mean, you're pretty gassed. So I think, you know, we gotta really work on your cardio. And once we do, I think you'll start to see some of your skills come back, but it's, it's gotta be done. So we've just now started easing back into training. And obviously with the time off, Aria has slid back somewhat from where he was when we actually stepped into the octagon last time. Aria's gonna face a lot of mental challenges this time around. I do think that you're dealing with a level of awareness going into this fight that you did not have going into the first fight. And that in itself can be an obstacle to overcome. Because when you haven't done this yet, you don't know how hard it is. So you just show up and do what you're told and then all of a sudden the fight day comes and you walk out and you go out there and, and you do it. But then the next time it happens, you're dealing with the knowledge of how hard you had to work, how difficult it was to make that walk into the cage and to face that guy and the reality that you've gone back to work and gotten into a relationship and done the things that people do in life and now all of a sudden you gotta step back into the gym and try to pick up where you left off two years ago I think that's a significant mental obstacle that needs to be overcome and I feel like a part of me that's struggling a lot more I think mentally than I dealt with previously it's a different type of struggle I feel like the doubts I faced last time were more external factors you know doubts from other people you know if my body could even handle the training but this time around the the the, the, the struggle the doubts feel different it feels like they're more like within me I can't really place a finger on it but there's just something that's just not clicking and I don't really know what it is and the other thing that's in the back of my mind is that I haven't told my mom or dad yet that I, I might, you know, be getting back in the cage, uh, which I already know they're not gonna, they're not gonna be uh, ecstatic to hear. They, you know, um, the last time I fought, my father didn't even know until it was done because my mom didn't want to worry my dad. And when it was over, I told my mom, don't worry, that's it, you know. It's not gonna happen again. And I believed it in the moment. I thought, yeah, you know, I, I did what I set out to do. So why, why, get, why get back in there? So I don't know how I'm gonna break it that to them. And so I think that's also kind of in the back of my mind. How are you? Yeah, the fight's over. So how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I, uh, I passed out. You're kidding. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, but I didn't tap. That's my dad. No, yeah, yeah. I don't want him to know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <sighs> okay, no more. Don't do any more, right? We're finished. <laughs> We're done. I haven't been sleeping for a whole week and everything, so it's it's like okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now you can sleep. It's 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 all done. It's all done. Okay. It's over but now. You're okay. I'm happy now. I can sleep tonight. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I love you. Love, I love you. you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. At this point, you're not doing enough jujitsu, and that is why you're here, because you got tapped. You got choked the fuck out. Make time to be here, if it's important to you. I can't help you if you're not here. You can't help you if you're not here. You should not take a fucking fight if you're not training for that fight. We don't want a false sense of security, and I'm not saying that you have this, but you don't want to be someone that didn't really train for the fight, but you feel like you can win it because that guy looks weak. That guy kind of sucks, and did it. but that guy's busting his ass. And you, you know, you're editing till three in the morning. You're a positive, really sweet fucking dude. Like you're a kind. I don't see a shitty bone in your body, you know, and that's a good thing. But you're gonna need a little aggression. You gotta be like, okay, I have this thing, and I want to do well, I want to win. 
It's not I want to test myself. If you just want to test yourself, don't do it. Don't do it. No more excuses. No more late. No more not showing up and sending me a text message. I don't give a fuck. I don't. I don't give a fuck. If you don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck. If you're here and you care, I automatically care. That's on you. And if you don't feel right about it, don't fucking do it. Just got off the phone with my mom and told her about my plans to potentially fight in the cage again. And uh, didn't record that call because uh, definitely didn't, uh, you know, it, it wasn't, it, it went the way I expected. You know, my, my, mother pro uh, my mother wasn't too thrilled. Obviously my mom was very concerned to hear that I was going to potentially put myself through that again. And yeah, I mean, it's definitely, a, it's definitely something that gives me pause. Uh, I think it's helped me kind of understand a little bit more about why things have felt off for me, with me. Last time around, I was laser focused. There was nothing else on my mind except for eating well, training well, and doing everything I could to get into the cage, feeling as comfortable as I could. And I did that, I, I, I accomplished that. And and I think that's what it is. I think, it, I think I accomplished that. And so whatever that goal was, that goal isn't the same as whatever goal I have now. And I think what I'm struggling with is finding that a goal, a reason. Whatever my reason would be for fighting is different from other fighters, right? Because I'm not looking to do this professionally, full time. I guess what my mind is trying to rationalize or trying to understand is like, what, 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 is, what is the purpose? What is my purpose in doing this other than pride, other than wanting to, to, to make up for my loss last time. And if that is the only reason I could come up with, I'm struggling to, I'm struggling to, to see that as being enough for putting my family, putting the people who love me, who care about me through the stress of seeing me in the cage again, especially have, after having seen what happened to me last time, how much worse it could be. And then furthermore, not just for them, but also for myself. You know, like I'm in a different place than I was two years ago. I've been leaning into a lot more of the filmmaking passion that I have. I've done documentaries for the Unsolved Network. I'm working on my own personal projects, you know, things that I, I wasn't really carrying with me the last time around. And then there's other variables too, like I'm in a relationship now, a great relationship that I want to be able to contribute to and not be like this absent partner who has gone constantly training. This time around, there's just so many other things I feel on the table that I, I, I feel responsible for. And I think that's why I'm struggling to rationalize if just my pride alone, if fighting again for the sake of my pride alone is worth all of that. All right, so today let's get a couple round of boxing sparring in. It's been a minute since you've been in the ring, so let's start easy. Just work jabs and feints. Try to mostly just work with our left hand the first round, and then we'll pick it up a little. Hands up, chin down. We've got to stay focused. Chin down, hands up. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I'm not even halfway through the second round. Come on. I'm gonna go harder. One more. Sparring sessions always act as a good reality check, and for the past few weeks, or maybe since then, I've really began training. Uh, this time around, it's, I feel like it's all been one big reality check, you know? So I don't know if Ario is taking this as serious as he should right now. And it, it, I, I mean, I'm sure he, he wants to do this, but he's not training the way he should. He's not doing what he's supposed to do in the moment. And I know there's all sides, there's work and there's projects and there's whatever the fuck's going on in his life that's holding him back, but that's not going to matter when he, if he steps up and he gets in the cage. 
No, use your left hand. There you go. That was good. I felt like there were times where I was holding my own in the sparring. I was I was trying to compare it to the first time I ever sparred with Chris, where I was just getting knocked around like a rag doll. This time around, I was still getting knocked around like a rag doll, but the, I feel like there were flashes of moments where I thought, okay, I can do this again. Right now, it's time to get going. It's time to start treating this like a fight camp, and Arya needs to get his priorities in line. Well, there you go, see? See, you have the energy. You just have to believe in yourself. I realized, though, that a reality check doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing, because if anything, this reality check of all the sparring, it reminded me of what I can do. And I think I'm finally about to figure out the reason why I'm stepping back into the cage. Come on. Ah! Oh. Oh. 